intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey, Star Trek Fleeky Man fans. Welcome back to the channel. And today, we're doing our recap video talking about the Ferengi arc. And now that it's wrapped up, yes, it was only two months long. And honestly, some of you are going to just simply say, it was too long as it was it was probably considered by many out there and i really do want to know your thoughts as always i love it when y'all comment i've been really trying to do better as a content creator to reply more to your comments so if you got them drop them below but i think many people feel it was the worst arc that we've had and you know there have been bad months but this was just one of those like the entire set just felt lackluster the good thing i guess is that it kind of ended on a high note or a higher note this event is bad and you should feel bad, Scopely. Stop screwing the small players! Stop it! And what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna talk about grading month two of the arc, which I do feel like was much better than month one, and then we'll grade the arc as a whole. Now, the difficulty being with it only being a two month arc is even if the second month was perfect, which it wasn't, I don't believe it was, it can't save the arc as a whole. So let's just go ahead and put it out there arc for the Ferengi. The Ferengi arc as a whole is going to get a D grade for me at absolutely the best a C. You know, I, I do think there's some good improvements. I think some great things got added to the game, but overall the Ferengi arc gets a big D. Now, if you want to throw that actually make it's okay for me, it made a D. There you go. There you go. Graphics on the screen. So it was a D for me at worst a C. We do know that for me, I graded out like a D minus. For month one, I did like the changes they made, things like Cosmic Cleanup getting updates, things like the, you know, Mining Monday events getting an update, and then the last saving grace, probably from the first month, was the Dabo Wheel. Now, we had that again here in month two. I do feel like it was useful in month two, and even though they changed the currency that you were getting to, you know, the Dabo tokens being different than month one, which I don't really get the point of doing that, everybody should have got right at the same amount. We also saw the ticket events come through. The ticket events had greatly increased resources and the Dabo events running concurrently with those tended to have some overlap or as DJ likes to call them synergy. So when you did have days that were heavier in events this month, you ended up being able to finish multiple events at one time. So you weren't having to spend as much time doing work in the game, which is good. We like that. And then of course you had these Dabo options, which honestly I spent most of mine in the away teams section but i'm not sure where all y'all did as far as officers go i think events were great but the officers are always going to be one of the ways that we can tell whether something was good or bad and i do think that we ended up getting one of the better sets of officers as a complete group in the game for a month that we've had in quite some time and what i mean by that is if we come on down and i've got <laughs> i really hope that the mission i'm finishing up has got rom shard because i'm falling one short feels terrible but I feel like Rom was a fantastic addition to the game. As captain, we have an entire video dedicated to explaining how Rom works. And as a raid captain, he's simply unbeatable. He is the best raiding officer in the game now without needing synergy. And that's great, you know, because Khan, you know, the, the probably the, not even probably, the number one raiding crew before Rom still required Khan to run synergy to be as effective as we really wanted him to be. Well, that's not the case here with Rom. Rom's simply ready to go out of the box. And then you go to the other officers where you had Quark last month. I prefer Rom over his brother Quark, which is rude, but sorry, Quark, Rom was better. Then we end up getting Kath, which is a better version of Talon. The value is self-explanatory. So that was an automatic huge love for me. Then we had Eric last month, who was probably the best, you know, Probably the best, yeah, better than Quark by something, just because the concentrated latinum mining improvements, and then you had Fess. And overall, I'm leaving pretty impressed with the Rom Kath, you know, combination here. And you know, we had Grush and everything come through with Syndicate recently, and it feels like the groups are kind of getting a little shallow in the members, as well as being very heavy in epics and rares. I'm hoping that in future months we're going to see some uncommons coming back to the game and you know, I've really been pressing that issue for months. Stay tuned. Maybe that'll actually come through. But officer wise, I think that we probably got a very well-rounded set. And I know many of you wanted a Chin version as well as a Talon version for officers, but here's what it is. We can only grade what was here. So officers, I'm going to give an A to so straight up. Give an A I, right there. makes an A. See, it's an A kids. I really feel like this set of officers while small, you know, a small group, 
for a fantastic group, which is one of the reasons that I give the arc overall not an F grade. As bad as month one was, the events here was better. The event store was obviously superior. And then you got a good set of officers. Let's talk about the Fisha real quick because you did have this come through and it's gotten several updates here throughout the process. I really do like that it is immediately better. I mean, it is from the very get-go, similar to the Franklin A, better than its predecessor. So as soon as you scrap your regular Devore to get the Fisha, and while you do still want the regular Devore, this is more important. And the ability to get the Latinum every day. See, I've only got mine tier two. I haven't upgraded yet. Part sourcing is going to be a pain, just like it is for you know all the other chips that seems to be specialty wise. And we're going to continue to gripe at them to get better sourcing for things like ship parts, Devore parts in particular, spore drive components. You know, all these things need to get a little bit more love. Don't worry. We are continually telling Scopely these things because you are telling them to us. So refinery though, if we come down to the Latin refinery, you got both down here. You see at level two, me getting over 2000 Latinum a day, 2300 Latinum a day, doing that, you know, for an entire year, hundreds of thousands of free Latinum coming to me for something that doesn't require a ton of work for me to go mine. I can really do it on Mondays or something once a week for the entire week and be good to go. So these events, and I, it's really what I'm pressing on the most here, these events have really improved from the first month of what we had. And at the end of the day, this month was an enjoyable month. Now you did not have a massive event store or a normal event store because this was not long enough. You have to have at least three months before they give a big event store. However, that said, we did talk to them and we managed to get a bonus refinery. So I'm still gonna give myself a thumbs up for that. That's one of my things. I fight for bonus refineries and we'll fight for them again in the next couple of months. And I also give a shout out to the other content creators like DJ, Snake Eyes, uh, Ripper, the moderators who help focus on fighting for the events and getting more balance there. But you got a new ship this arc. You got new officers this arc. You got better paying out events. You got several notable improvements. And then you've got one of my favorite mechanics, which is essentially the Crucible of War mechanic to a degree with the Dabo wheel that allows you to pick the resources and the materials you want. I would like to see stuff like this evolve to a more micro level. And what I mean by that is you having the ability to choose specifically what you want instead of having to go crystal and then receive tritanium, being able to go crystal and receive dilithium or going or and receiving tritanium, you know, something like that. I think that that would take it to another level. Hopefully future stores allow us to have that level of selectability. And as far as the missions go for the Ferengi arc, they're actually semi-enjoyable if you've actually read the dialogue. I don't think that, you know, because in the past I've had real issues with some of the dialogue of these missions just being not believable. But it actually has been like, a okay, this storyline makes sense. And I've been working through that. I did not finish it during the arc. You can see I've been doing it here today. And uh, as far as stories go, I really thought that the dialogue and where they're taking you made sense. It added up. The drawback... High levels only participating for the most part. A lot of these missions unable to be accessed by a large you know, portion of the player base, which once again brings me back to some of my negatives because to me, any arc that comes out, you should have the majority of your player base in it. And if it's really requiring you, for example, here's one of the ships that you got to destroy. If it's requiring you to kill a 5.8 million ship, obviously that is not catering to the majority of the players in the game. Still, it's a positive for me. I feel like the arc ended on a strong note, which is good because they had to recover from February. Then you had the treasury, which was a mixed bag to say the least. You have a very loud group of people who hate the treasury because it's, you know, pay to, to get what you want. It's now closed, but it was always announced that it was going to be a paid feature. At the end of the day, do I really care about the treasury? I think it's a fantastic building. I noticed the difference when it comes to me mining regular materials or ore and you know, gas, crystal, and right now I'm actually dil uh, mining dilithium for a mission, and all that ends up mattering to me. It really does. Treasury as a building was a fantastic addition as a building. What I mean by that is the mining speed protector cargo, cargo cap is fantastic for free-to-play players. It's going to really improve those mining missions that you have to do. So because of that, I can't give it a negative. I think the treasury is a fantastic addition. And the pack side of that be annoying 100 and you're valid to get annoyed by it but the free side of it is a wonderful addition to the game for players and then the treasury itself with its um lockbox shouldn't even be called a lockbox but whatever 
if you did buy it, you probably got good rewards from it. So, end of the day, Ferengi managed to go from the worst to middling, I think. And I'd be curious to see when and if they revisit this as we build towards DS9 at some point this year. They've already talked last year, hinting at DSpace 9 this year. Well, having the Ferengi, you would think that they'd be a part of it with Quark and anything else that can help build towards Deep Space Nine. But I do really want to know your thoughts and your opinions on this. And as always, the comment section down below is where to do it. If you like this video, which I hope you did, and maybe you agree or disagree, at either way, this is a great opportunity for a public forum type thing for you to get feedback. Live long and prosper. Stay safe for those Space Cowboys. Deuces. That's me. I'll catch you on the next one. And thanks, as always, for tuning in as we grade this one. Oh, I didn't even put a, a grade for the month. I just kind of graded parts. Month two was a B plus or B minus. It's a B. It wasn't an A. Somewhere in the B range helps lift up the entire arc. That's my grade. You drop yours down below. An even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house.